Yeah, thanks, thanks everyone for coming out again. I appreciate you. We uh, we're in the week two with our uh, with our fall camp. We had a uh, we had a scrimmage on on Saturday, and I like what I saw. We had guys really competing hard. I feel like we're getting better as a football team. The coaches are, are coaching hard. We got a lot of buy-in out there. Guys are running around, playing fast, playing hard, and. Uh, just really a lot of uh, a lot of bright spots out there. So, um, <clears throat> you know, going into week two, you know, guys for the most part know what they need to do um, and how to do it. And it's about execution and being consistent and raising the level of intensity every single day. You know, and getting better. You know, today is, you know, above and beyond Monday. You know, I ask everyone in the organization, including myself, to do um, something today, anything above and beyond what you would normally do to help us get a little bit better today. You know, coaches and players, you know, and staff, you know, and, you know, not a lot better, just a little bit better. Because if everyone gets a little bit better every day, everyone gets a little bit better today, um, when you add that up, aggregation of marginal gains, we get a lot better. And we're 18 days out. Um, we don't have time to waste. And so um, there's a lot of intentional focus with the group right now, uh, taking it one, one day at a time, and really working to raise our level of intensity in everything that we do. And attention to detail is a big part of that. So we had a good practice this morning. I'm going to get back here and watch the tape and see what the butcher's bill is, and then we'll move on to the next day. But with that, I'll open it up. Hey, Mel, I was wondering, is there, was there one area you thought you guys were maybe pleased with more than others and from the scrimmage and you know, an area or two that you think you guys need to make the most progress in? Yeah, well, I was I was pleased pleased with the the way we ran the ball. You know, at times with some guys. I mean, a Burger was about five yards a, a pop, and and he was running behind his pass. He was falling forward on contact, which is good. Um, had really good, you know, traffic burst, you know, through the hole, and uh, showed really good vision and, and ran hard. Uh, you know, Peyton was was efficient and 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 complete and competed well. Um, you know, DJ Barker showed up and was uh, very productive in the oppor opportunities that he did have. You know, Ben Van Summeren, um, Van Summeren is, is, really, uh, is really coming on. You know, he had a good spring and, and uh, he's really starting the last uh, couple of days of last week was really starting to play well and he carried that over and had, had quite a bit of production. So, um, you know, there's, a, there's, there's, quite a, there's quite a few guys that are playing well. I mean, Xavier Henderson is... Is, is very consistent. He's playing fast. Uh, his speeds are up on a consistent basis, you know, based upon the, the numbers that we get off of the units. Um, you know, Jacob Slade is uh, he's in really good shape. You know, he's a you know, great condition. He looks uh, looks quick. He obviously stopped against the run, but he's showing some uh, some push in the pocket on in the pass rush and you know working edges and things like that. You know, being disruptive. Inside and so, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, quite a few bright spots. No, I, I'd imagine you're probably one, two, pretty well set with Jaden and Trey coming back from last year. But that, uh, how much of a battle is there for the number three receiver spot? Because it seems like Keon and Jeremy are both kind of pushing for that a little bit. And are there other guys in the mix for that? Yeah, those guys are, are competing hard and uh, and they both make plays on a consistent basis. You know, Keon, uh, we all know that he, he has a lot of ability and a lot of potential and he's he's uh, beginning to realize, you know, that potential and, and show it on a consistent basis on the field. Um, you know, he's a, he's a big target. He's got really good ball skills um, and he can run and he's a willing blocker, you know, at this point. And so, um, and then Jeremy is, uh, <clears throat> you know, as a true freshman, you know, coming in and, and really, uh, you know, really goes about his business with, with intention. You know, he's focused. Um, you know, he's willing, um, a willing blocker in the run game. He's got really soft hands and he's got good speed. And, uh, you know, he's competitive. So, um, you know, Kristen Fitzpatrick showed up and made some plays for us. You know, big, another big uh, target. Um, just playing fast and, and being aggressive, um, and so uh, yeah, we, we we have a lot of competition, 
you know, at, at those positions. We're going to play the best players. We like to play a lot of players. You know, we like to play a lot of players on both sides of the ball and on special teams. I, I really like what our special teams are doing right now. You know, Ross Ells is doing a phenomenal job with our guys. Uh, I told the guys this morning, we have more guys that we believe can be productive in special teams than we've, than we've had since we've been here. You know, more uh, big bodies they can run and can hit. Um, that can uh, that are instinctive. They can you know can adjust on the run and and love to play the game of football. And so uh, you know, I'm I'm really uh, really encouraged by what I see from the special teams and the buy-in. You know from the meetings and then our drill work. You know guys giving giving tremendous effort in the drill work and taking over into the to uh, the team periods and, and really uh, and really showing that you know they want to play teams and and showing that you know that they know what's important. Uh, Mel, you talked about your run game up top. Just where do you see that competition with the running back specifically right now? And, and was the the scrimmage maybe a, a good separator at that group at all? Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a lot of uh, competition there, and I, I you know I mentioned Berger, but you know Broussard is is, is doing well, and uh, you know is, is showing up. You know, I'm, I'm glad we got him. You know, big time. You know, um, you know Elijah is is has been playing fast. Um, Harold has been hitting it, hitting it hard. Hitting the whole heart. Um, he's got really good ball skills out of the backfield. And, um, yeah, I mean, this uh, Jordan Simmons, you know, he really, you know, he's hitting his tracks and he's, he's running hard and, and being physical doing it. So, um, you know, we'll have to see, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go out there again and scrimmage on Friday. And then, and then that's, that's going to be a huge scrimmage for us because at some point we have to decide who we're going who we're to give the reps to in preparation for the game, you know, because everyone can't get reps in game weeks, you know, um, there's not enough reps to go around. And so, uh, you know, we've got another week. This is a huge week for us in the week two in camp. Um, you know, again, we need to raise our level of intensity and, our, and the level of consistency. And, you know, we have to honor, we have to honor each other by, you know, how we go about our business, the actions that we take on a day to day basis, you know. We have to honor, you know, honor each other, you know, by, you know, playing hard and coaching hard, you know, and uh, doing it for each other, you know, to get better and continue to push and hold each other accountable. And we talk about a player, a player led team, you know, um, you know, Peyton is really stepping up. Uh, he's not the only one, you know, X is stepping up. Um, and he's not the only one. We've got guys that are stepping up and and uh, and really taking the reins and, and they realize they're beginning to realize that is I can't do it's not it's not Coach Tuck. It can't be just me pulling guys. It's not just, you know, Jay or Cap or Scotty, you know, or Ross or any of the coaches. It's not uh, just the coaches, the it's players. The players need to take ownership of the football team. And I'm seeing more and more of that every single day. Coach, I know you uh, you've been getting in there a little bit more with the with the D backs uh, starting out camp. Can you uh, talk about what you've uh, seen from Angelo Gross in this early part of camp? Yeah, the weasel is uh, uh, his his footwork is really is really cleaned up. This uh, I would say the last uh, last three or four days, and you know HB you know really does a great job with those guys. Um, He's playing fast. He's taking taking good angles. He's showing good range in the in the deep part of the field, um, and he's also uh, you know he's he's tracking the ball and he's packing a punch on contact, you know uh, near leg near shoulder striking guys and, and uh, knocking them back or at least getting a stalemate, and so uh, that's what you have to do. And he knows the position. He knows he knows the calls he needs to make and help help him get guys lined up, you know. So he's he's uh, he's doing a heck of a job back there so far. But Coach Barnett, I'm just telling you now. He's he's a damn good football coach, and the players respond to him. Um, and he and he's and he's 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 on him, he's on him, uh, you know, nonstop to uh, to make sure that we get what we want. And uh, yeah, I, I love the way he coaches the game. Now that you've gone through the spring and a little bit of you know, fall practice, fall camp, um, how much do you think you've gained from being, you know, the cornerbacks coach, kind of? coaching on the field in the 
in a specific position and how much has your perspective changed as a result of that? How much have I gained yeah. from doing that? Well, um, what, what, I, what I get out of it is, um, you know, I love to coach. I love to do the hands-on coaching, you know, uh, position coaching, whether it's, you know, a corner or safety, a, a nickel, whatever. Um, I mean, that's, that's what I love to do um, on the grass the most. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I get to do that, you know, every day, which, um, and, it's, and, it's, uh, and it's, it's very humbling. <laughs> Coaching is a very humbling profession. And um, <laughs> when you're trying to get guys to do what you want them to do and they don't always do it, you know, uh, you know, you got to, you got to point to yourself. You got to look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, you know, I need to do a better job coaching. You know, so I'm going on year 26 and I'm still humbled every day, you know, out there. So, um, you know, you got to stay, for me, I have to stay hungry. You know, I have to, um, you know, continue to become a better teacher. Um, I really uh, finding out more and more about the players individually, like what, buttons that I need to push, um, you know, how to not just motivate guys, but inspire guys. Um, and then, you know, I was obviously, you know, confronting guys and demanding that they do it right, but not just, you know, telling them, but showing them, okay, you know, how, how to do it, you know, how, how they can get better, you know, specifically whether it's footwork, it's eye discipline, it's hand placement, whether it's, you know, approach, you know, awareness, you know, whatever progression, you know, um, and then when they do it right, then make sure that I, you know, that I tell them that they did it right and be, and be enthusiastic about that just as much as I'm on them, if not more, you know, uh, than when I'm on them, like when they do it wrong, you know, because, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's part of it, you know, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, every day is, a, every day is, a, is, a, is a challenge, um, and I love to do it, and, uh, and it's also a challenge to do that, and also see the big picture, as well, and not just not uh, get caught in the weeds. Um, I've been doing this for a while, a long, a long time, so so um, you know I'm able to do it, um, but can't take anything for for granted out there, you know, because uh, you know especially at that position, you know success is measured in inches. And, and to follow up, I mean, uh, you talked about the big picture. How important has becoming the practice review sessions that you do afterwards with the with the film center? How important has that become because you're so focused, in, you know, on coaching a, a specific position? Yeah, well, uh, typically, um, like today, you know, twelve thirty, you know, one o'clock, whenever whenever we can get the, done with special teams, uh, you know, I'll go on with the defensive staff. And, and review the film with them. And I'm in there with my notebook and, 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 uh, and pen. And, you know, and Scotty's, Scotty's running the tape. And I'm, I'm an assistant coach, you know. I'm an assistant coach. And, uh, you know, Scotty said, hey, uh, is, that, you know, is that right corner supposed to keep his outside leg and off? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's wrong. I got to do a better job coaching. I'll get, I'll get him right. I'll get him right. You know, and so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm part, of, I'm part, of, I'm part of the defensive staff at that point. You know, obviously, I do. You know, I see everything else that's going on out there, and I, I make some comments here and there. Um, I can't help myself, but, you know, really, I'm, I'm, I'm there to, to coach, coach those guys and get them better. That's my job. Hey, Mel, I was wondering what you think of the uh, kicking competition so far. Obviously, with Matt being gone and. and bringing in a new guy and do you see that as something that could carry into the season where you're using multiple guys I don't, I don't know about I don't know about that it's, it's really early too early to, to say for sure about you know how many guys we're going to use um, you know we don't we're not clear right now who, who's going to be the guy um, but we have uh, we still have you know plenty of opportunities to find out and, uh, and we'll put them in those situations and but I'm encouraged that what I see out there. I feel like we'll be very productive at that position. And so, uh, yeah, but it's still, it's still open. 
saw on Twitter that Mark D'Antonio stopped by practice this morning. Yeah. Did you guys design to have him come this day, or did he reach out to you to come this day? How did that you know, come to be, and did he deliver any type of message to the guys? Yeah, well, uh, Dino stopped by, I think it was maybe a, a week ago, just to say hi, and, he, and I wasn't there. He missed me, he left me a note, and I, I sent him a text saying, hey, I'm sorry, I missed you. Um, and, uh, and then he, he told me that he, w he was planning on coming to practice today. So um, and I saw him out there, and, uh, and when we had our halftime break, I was able to go, on, go and talk to him. He didn't, he didn't address the team. Um, I mean, you know, he's there and guys see him and they go over and say hello to him. And, and so just like I did, and, and it, it was good. You know, he was happy to get out there and see some football. And, uh, and uh, you know, he had a couple questions for me, you know, about our practice schedule, how long we're going to go today and things like that. Uh, but it's always good to see uh, Ben Sose out there. That's his, I've been calling him Dino Ben Sose for, I don't know, since, I don't know, it's been a long time. 2001, maybe. That's my guy. I'm wondering, when you talk with a gleam in your eye about preparing a team, do you almost enjoy as a coach the preseason even more than the game grind because you're shaping a team, if that makes any sense? Do I enjoy it more? Um, I, enjoy, I enjoy it all. It's, it's different. There's different phases of the, of the year. Because this, this is, that's why I say, uh, I don't say uh, off season, I say out of season. I mean, because it's just year round, there's different phases, and all of them are important. And preseason is a phase. Um, and it's a, it's a special time, it's a special time of year. It's not necessarily like it used to be, you know, where you maybe go off to camp, uh, you know, things like that. You're practicing twice a day, you know, guys are, you know, you know, blow up mattresses in the indoor in the locker room in between practices and things like that. But it's still, it still is camp. And at this point, we're not focused on our opponent. We're focused on ourselves. And that's the difference. That's what, that's what makes it, um, that's what makes it, uh, you know, even sometimes more challenging because you can't get bored with the fundamentals. It can't, it can't become ordinary or mundane because we're not necessarily in a game plan, and it's not game week. You know, it's, we're week two of camp, and we're hammering every single day, same thing over and over again. You know, eye discipline, you know, attention to detail, pad level, you know, blow delivery, using your hands, footwork, you know, extra effort to the ball, extreme effort to the ball, upper body violence to the ball, leverage and tackle, I mean, basic things. And it's like every single day, you know, get to the ball, get lined up, you know, get the call, communicate the call, sign and co-sign, give a call, get a call. It's the same thing every day. And you can't, the guys can't, they can't, um, you know, they can't get bored with that, you know, and that's camp. You know, you can't have the poor me's. You can't walk in and say, oh, woe is me. You know, my, my hand is sore. You know, uh, I couldn't sleep last night. Uh, I don't feel like it's standard over feelings was really what it comes down to. You don't, you don't do things based upon how you feel. You do things based upon the standard of performance. And that dictates the decisions that you make and the choices you make. You know, in this point of camp, okay, there's no turning back. I already gave these guys an opportunity. I gave them an opportunity uh, when we started our out of season conditioning program over the winter. Okay, if you're not bought in, you got, you got an opportunity to leave now. Okay, then I gave him another opportunity before he started spring ball. Hey, do you want to be here? Do you are you willing to do what it takes to 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 be the, the best that we can be? Okay, another opportunity. You know, before we be, before we start our summer program. Hey, you want to be here? You you want to put the work in? Do what it takes. You know, how bad do you want it? What are you willing to do to get it? Another opportunity to get in or or get out. And then again, when we started camp, you know, hey, we're here. Do you, we, are, you, are you in or are you out? You know, so right now we're week two. Is there, there's no turning back. Like, everybody's all in, and we got to get it done with the guys we got. You know, that, that's it. So we're like, we're digging in right now. We're digging in. Like, it's, 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 it's and we need to push. And after we watch this tape, okay, we got to set our jaw, and we got to get, we got to find a way to get better tomorrow. 
you know, we got to find a way to get better tomorrow, one day at a time. I'm also wondering if it's too early. You don't produce a two deep or three deep for us until game week, but do you have one as coaches, and is that ever changing? Like, like is, that, is that part of what this week is, is so important for? Well, we have a rep chart because when you say first group out or second group out, you know, somebody, you've got to have organization, you know, out there so guys know who's in and who's not in. So you say, hey, here's a the, here's the rep chart for the day. This is the first group, the second group, and sometimes it changes within the practice. It may change by series or it changes by the day, you know, and then, um, and then we look at the production, you know, in the scrimmages and, you know, throughout, we grade every practice. Um, you know, either it's in this, you either get a plus or you get a minus, you get a win or you get a loss. You know, you get a, you know, a technique grade, a production grade, you know, and we're, you know, we're, we're taking in the, the, whole, the whole body of work. And, uh, and then at some point, yeah, you know, we, we will have a, a two deep, you know, and you would like to have as many guys as, you, as we can, you know, be able to go out there and play winning football. That's what we need, because we need depth. You know, we need depth in our roster, guys who can go out and, and do what we need them to do and be able to win one-on-one -on -one and be productive. And so, uh, you know, we're coaching, every, we're coaching everyone. I mean, every, like everyone out there is getting coached hard. You know, we got like 120 guys out there, something like that. And we can't, we, we can't afford not to coach a guy, you know, because that, that, that guy may be in the game. You know, or that might, that guy may be, he may come on like in the last, like in November. He may not be ready now, but he may be ready in November, you know, to, to help us. And so it's continually, you know, our job was to teach, motivate, inspire, and develop players, you know, while they're here, you know, every single day to get them as good as we can get them, you know, and then we, we give them a two deep. Yeah, we'll give you a two deep, get out there, but, you know, you know, I'm hoping all those guys in the two deep can go out there and play for us. And that's, that's, the, that's, that's the goal. You know, maybe three deep can go out there and make plays in the games. Uh, Mel, touching back to the above and beyond theme, I'm just wondering what you have done or are going to do to sort of meet that, and if you noticed yeah. anybody else, any of your players that sort of stuck out, like, ah, that's, a, yeah. that's an above and beyond thing today, or that is, or that is. Yeah, well, once, once I get done watching the film, today, the practice film, then I'm going to map out, you know, what I need to do, you know, today above and beyond uh, to help us. You know, we, our day pretty much ends with the players like around 8 o'clock uh, p.m. when we're done because, you know, we have, we have meetings in the afternoon and in the evening. Um, and we have walkthroughs and things like that. And so, uh, you know, you know I'll, I'll, fig I'll figure it out. You know, I've got some, I've got definitely have some, some ideas uh, in my mind, because um, I'm the one that asked the staff <laughs> this morning, the 7:15 7, a.m. staff meeting, and said, "Hey, you know, want everybody, you know, to do something above and beyond today to help us get better." I said, myself included, you know. So my wheels have been turning, you know, you know, over the weekend, um, and uh, and you know, I, I need I need to get that done, and and then we'll uh, and we we will get better. I believe that everyone's bought in, you know, and there's no substitute for hard work. There really isn't, you know, but, you know, it's got to be productive and it's got to be intentional, you know, what we do to move the needle, you know, so, you know, maybe you can ask me, you know, next week or whatever, but we're going to get, some, I'm going to get something done today, you know, extra. Just real quick, what's your normal Monday theme in practice during the season? Monday is like, like Tuesday, that was like max effort Tuesday or something. Don't you usually have a coach me coach and everything? Well, I think we have like, uh, I think we had like Coach Me Coach Tuesday, maybe Bloody Wednesday, you know, No Sweat Thursday, Fast Friday, you know, Monday. We haven't had anything for Monday yet. We might have sometimes it's Takeaway Tuesday. Uh, maybe we'll put that out, you know, out there if you got have anything for Monday. Today, today is above and beyond Monday can hashtag that, you know, because that's what it is today. Haven't done anything for Monday yet. Have we done anything for Mondays? I told him, I said, it's not Monday. I told him today, I said, it's, 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 it's uh, above and beyond Monday. 
not Monday, Monday, Monday. Above and beyond Monday. Where's that come from? Coach Alvarez used to, um, he used to, his voice would get high, he'd get high pitched uh, when he would talk to us, and he would, uh, and he would say, everyone wants to win on Saturday. <laughs> um, I, I was wondering, saw that Ethan Boyd was getting some reps with the ones um, at right tackle. I guess, where's that competition at right now on the offensive line, particularly the tackles? Mm -hmm. And what are you seeing from those younger guys that you, you talked about coming into this that mm -hmm. need to kind of step forward? Yeah, he's, he's been getting some reps in there. And, you know, Spencer Brown is in there. And then, you know, we got Horst in there. And then Baldwin's been getting some reps in there. So we're rolling those guys through, and guys are getting getting good work in there. Absolutely, yep, working. Mel, how how, in, how important do you think it is to find a featured back that is an identifiable threat for the opposing defense, just to be able to sell play action, since that was such a big part of your game last year? Yeah, you you, you have to have a you have to be able to run the ball on your terms. Like when we want to run it, when we need to run it, we have to be able to run it. And you have to have a, a, a strong offensive line. Um, you got to have uh, guys that are willing to block in the tight end position and the uh, receivers. Um, you got to have really good scheme, be able to get in and out of plays. And you got to have some calling and running plays too where you don't care, you're just calling, you're just running it. Okay, and then you got to have some backs that can tote that mail. You got to have guys that put pressure on the defense where you hand the guy the ball and everyone on the defense is at the point of attack, front side and back side. That's the type of back you need. You, guys, you need guys that can, that can hit the hole and take what's there. You need guys that can maybe make, get something that's not there, you know, that can make guys miss and they can run you over and fall forward on contact, get yards after contact. You know, so it's important to have, to have a back. Okay? It's important uh, to have more than one back you know, to, to stay fresh and keep hammering and hitting it up in there and protecting the football. But how much do you think the defense last year, you know, maybe the opposing defense saw Kenneth Walker and was like, you know, we need, we need to kind of play, play safe here a little bit, and, you know, so, so that they look like guys maybe towards the line, like off the line? Well, you know, if you, if, if, I mean, that's a, that's a, um, you know, that's a good question. That's a, and I think you and I might have talked about this before, but, um, you know, if you can, if, if, if you have a, a really strong run game, you know, on the early downs and, 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 and defenses feel like they need to commit extra people to the run game, you know, they create more one-on-ones outside and it also makes your play action better and things like that, you know. And, uh, you know, we can't allow people to line up in split safety coverage, you know, and, you uh, you know, and in and, uh, and light boxes, you know, and control our front, you know, and be able to, you know, double our receivers, things like that, and stop the run. You know, we can't allow that. So, you know, we got to have a strong running game, um, you know, to be able to, to have the type of balance um, and that we, that we want to have on offense. Hey, Mel, uh, for, with a true freshman, any of those guys caught your eye yet after one scrimmage and a, and a few practices? True freshman. Yeah, uh, yeah, J Jeremy Bernard, it's, it's caught my eye um, out there. What other true freshmen do we have out there? You know, Tyrell Henry's a good player now. He, he's a good player. Zion Young is a good player, a good young player, you know, trying to figure out what to do. You know, a day Willie had a had a he was he was uh, consistent in the scrimmage. I was I liked the way he graded out. He had really good focus today. It was a, a longer guy that can run, you know, you know, learn how to play consistently, you know, play with intensity, you know, um, you know, that we need, you know, right there. So yeah, I mean there's a there's a there's a couple of guys out there. I don't want to build these guys up, you know, because we we only just had, you know, one scrimmage and it's still young, it's still early in the process. So I don't wanna like put these guys out there and hold them up, you know, there um, yet, you know, because it's consistency and performance. But, you know, there are guys, you know, out there that are flashing, 
Um, and and I, I believe that it should be able to help us, you know, this year. I, re I really do, you know.